Hello and welcome to this video presentation on foundational and constitutional issues in company law. My name is John Lowry, I'm a professor at UCL and together with Alan Dignam, who is Professor of Corporate Law at Queen Mary, we convene this course. We also, as you probably know, co-author the study guide and we also co-author the recommended textbook. Company law is an important subject insofar as it forms one of the centerpieces of commercial law broadly defined. Companies as a means of doing business lie at the heart of free market economies. Companies and therefore company law operate in a socio-economic and political context and business activity obviously falls under the umbrella of that legal system or regime. There are 1.4 million limited liability companies in the UK. 99% of those companies are private, leaving therefore less than 1% actually of registered companies being public. Private companies, some of which can be quite large, are those companies, the shares of which are not traded on a recognised stock exchange. Whereas, of course, public companies, most people are familiar with because their shares are traded. 2006 was a record year for companies because 80 new companies were registered every hour during that year. Now, the focus of this course is clearly on the Companies Act 2006, which is the governing statute for most of the material we cover. But before I introduce the nature of that statute, it's worth just going back in time, because modern company law can be dated to the mid-19th century with the passage of the 1844 Joint Stock Companies Act. There was a reason for the introduction of that statute. For historians, the 18th and 19th centuries were an era of marked increased commercial activity. And the sort of entrepreneurs that were carrying out that work wanted a suitable vehicle in which to conduct their business. And the suitable vehicle was the company. Now, looking to this particular course and trying to tie in the nature of a company to give you a flavour for what we're going to be studying, um, you should note that companies are an attractive way in which to conduct business because unlike other forms of business association, for example partnerships or sole proprietorships, companies enjoy an existence separate from and distinct from the human actors that lie behind it. So, for example, in the mid-19th century, the idea of limited liability was also introduced. And so with companies, those who lie behind the name of the company are not personally responsible for the debts of the company. Whereas if you were a partner in a partnership or a sole trader, say, for example, a news agent, the debts of the business are the debts of the actor that is conducting that business, not so with companies. And of course, if you wanted to build a railway, as was the case in the mid-19th century, linking, for example, London with Edinburgh, you'd want a suitable vehicle for which you can attract investment in your scheme and thus the idea of companies really took off and exploded onto the scene. And as I mentioned, the first modern piece of legislation in company law is the 1844 Joint Stock Companies Act. Now that pretty much remained in place, albeit having enjoyed certain consolidations and so on, for the next century and a half. And then in 2006, um, we have a major reforming statute that updated company law to make the regime more efficient and more relevant to the way in which businesses are conducted in the 21st century. 
Now, companies, as I touched on, are metaphysical entities. They enjoy an existence separate and distinct from the actors that lie behind the company. And thus, it's companies who enter into contracts with outsiders, not the directors of the company or indeed its shareholders. It's the company in its own name. And so we're going to be considering in this course a range of factors. First of all, how do companies, how are companies incorporated? How do you bring a company into existence? How does the company contract with outsiders in its own right? What happens if all the directors, for example, and all the shareholders are involved in a freak accident and die? Well, actually, the company enjoys perpetual existence. It's not dependent on the actors that lie behind it. So we'll be considering the notion of what is considered the most fundamental principle of company law, and that is the idea of separate legal personality. The fact that the company is a metaphysical entity and the facets of the law that has to deal with that. Together with those examples, and they are sort of exceptions, where the courts are prepared to go through the company, the veil of incorporation, to hold those that lie behind it, the human actors, liable for the debts of the company. Having firmly established that idea in our minds, the course then traverses a whole range of other related issues um, that the law has had to develop in order to cope with this notion of um, the company as distinct from other business associations. So the course will look at the relationships between the company and outsiders, the relationships between the company and its shareholders, the way in which shareholders can be protected against the conduct, the oppressive conduct of majority shareholders, the way in which the company can have wrongs perpetrated against it as a person, albeit a legal person, and therefore the response of the law to ensure that the company can hold those wrongdoers um, liable through framing an appropriate action um, for the company to take. Okay, so if you look at the study guide, you'll see that the syllabus is pretty well set out there. And as I said, we traverse a whole range of subjects. Foundational issues in company law is a self-standing course, although many students go on to take um, the related course, corporate finance and management issues in company law. Um, foundational issues is an interesting course because it does lay the sort of fundamental principles that underpin company law. Um, companies are an important part of the commercial law scene. Um, enterprise is carried on um, through companies. Companies enjoy limited liability, by which we mean the shareholders have a preference for conducting their investments through companies because they're not liable for the debts of the company. And so we will be considering um, the issues that those principles throw up. And it is an interesting course. Um, Alan Dignam and myself, we hold an enthusiasm for this. We both worked in the area for many years. Um, and it is an integral part of this little commercial law spectrum.